up our 25th episode and our first season, we wanted to just take a pause and reflect on the incredible year we've had here at the Pinche Gringo Show. And then, of course, due to the wonderful corporate spent censors and offended Karens in the U.S., The Gringo Show. So let's run down our most memorable moments of this first season. Early in the season, we invited the U.S. ambassador to Mexico to come on the show, and he actually accepted. I even think his public affairs people were surprised and nervous as well. But the biggest surprise was when he showed up to the program in the best jacket ever. That I think your jacket is going to be the star of the show today. Uh, everybody's been commenting on social media on, on our on our feed about it. So uh, take a picture of the ambassador, and I want you to use this hashtag ambassador jacket because I think that's the coolest ambassador <laughs> jacket that we've ever had in the history of this show and, and anything else. So, ambassador, you know, if you can't be cool, you might as well dress cool. That's my motto. Ambassador, you're the coolest guy in the world. Don't worry about it. I love the jacket. I don't even know how we got on the show, but not only did he appear, but former economic secretary Ildefonso Guajardo also with a huge announcement. I have made it very clearly publicly that I'm trying to get the nomination of my party to contend in that election. I'm sure that was the first time he announced in English on TV or on the YouTube channel that he did this. But so there's a big announcement there. But how about this one? You know, we joke here that we don't think anyone is watching the show, but then we found out that our show was possibly being monitored and trolled by the Russians. Then good old American Jason Young with 24 subscribers and a patriotic bald eagle and his profile picture, proud of his country and apparently a fan of the gringo show. And he took the time to express his love for Donald Trump. But looking closer into his profile, take a look. It's in Russian. Now, yes, there is a possibility that Jason Young did a study abroad in Moscow during his junior year at Wichita State University. <laughs> hey, bro, they got vodka, hot girls, a lot of snow. Or can we entertain the possibility that these people are not real and are fake accounts created by hackers in St. Petersburg that I think I'm making, that think I'm making an impact on the U.S. presidential election? And all I have to say about that is, fuck yeah. <laughs> Thanks for playing my ego. Someone's paying attention to me. Yet. I just want to tell you, Russia, I had nothing to do with the election. I don't think anything I said had any sway on anybody. So you're wasting your time, Russia. Or how about one of our segments where we talked about ladies, lords, and kings? Heary, heary, as your official me, Ray. Uh, anyone got a cross and uh, some stuff in my chest hair? I now appoint Raul Bermudez Arriola, representative of the National Tourism Promotion Fund, also known as Fonator, in Cancun as an official Lord of Mexico. That's right. Last week, Raul, or now we call him Lord Fonator. So that was not the only time I had my shirt off. I did unbutton when I was talking about Mexico City's elite youth again, where I again unbutton my shirt. But then after I unbuttoned it, I interviewed the ex US ambassador to Mexico, but I forgot to rebutton the shirt. I just want to say as a, as a resident of Mexico City and part of the American community, you are incredibly highly respected here. Uh, everybody in the American community talked very highly about you as ambassador, and we hope to see you back here uh, sometime soon with us. One of the funniest segments we did was when we translated a few of the names of the Mexico City metro stops into English. Check out line eight, where your first stop is where rattles are made. Then meander on down to a with a piece of steak to the station named the House of Salt. How about putting on your bathing suit and stopping at Place of Medicinal Baths? Or and finally, be careful, because this is metro station is where water twists. I don't even know what I was wearing. I think I was like dressed up to like a, a 60s rock concerts or what I would have looked like if I was on a lot of coke. I don't know. But our most interesting interview came from Mickey Widobro from the famous Mexican band Molotov. Mickey's a very good friend of us at Pinche Gringo, and he agreed to be on our first ever show to talk about his beer. What we didn't know is that he was involved in a motorcycle accident the day before and suffered a broken leg. But because he loved us so much, he didn't cancel his appearance, but was probably on a few painkillers as he told us this story. And one of those, those cows fell into the pot. 
<laughs> the pothole. <laughs> and, she, oh, and she, the cow was there uh, three or four, four days dying, and nobody could take it uh -huh. away from, from there. So the, right. the donors, they didn't even want to, to give a, a shot to, like a great shot to the, to the cow. She was suffering, and nobody could make it to, to pull it out of a, of a pothole and stuff like that. So uh, uh, all my idea to give you like the water of my property was com kind of completely fucked up. <laughs> so sorry if, for the word. No, no, I understand. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> we were just talking about a cow. It was amazing. And it got even better because he, then he shared with us how much he loves making pizza. When I get something like a, a really nice cheese, you have to to drive like half an hour to uh, the first uh, decent supermarket and stuff like that. So it, it's been very hard for, for us to to deal with. Uh, you know, I'm also a, a pizza maker, a cooker. So uh, not a good word. word. Uh, <laughs> um, so for me, getting the right cheese and the right uh, dough, the sourdough and all the other things, it's really, it's really hard. I just love it how he went from beer to pizza and cows. But we love you, Mick. I love you, Mick, so much. You're, you're our, our biggest fan, and we're your biggest fan as well. But what about how we scored an interview with two-time UFC world champion Cain Velasquez? We had technical difficulties right before he came on and right when he was on, but everything came together, and we were able to have a really deep conversation with one of the toughest men in the world. Everybody else, like this is how I feel. I feel very connected to, to Mexico and, and and the people there, and I just kept doing that and saying that. And you know, before I fought, um, as I walked out to fight, I carried the bandana on my fist, you know, to represent like everybody is with me. Um, everybody Mexican is with me. We're all throwing the same punch together, type of thing. Um, I don't know if I was really aggravated about the the scene or I was really terrified that he was going to like take his hand through the camera and, and <laughs> I don't know. But oh and I definitely went on a few rampages about why people are so damn offended by the word pinche. Because to us pinche means love. It means that you are close to someone and you give yourself just a little bit of humility so that we can move to a more equal level with our Mexican brothers and sisters. I pinche love you and hashtag Pinche is not a bad word. It's not a bad word. I've been trying to say this for a long time, but you know, the censors don't agree with me, but whatever. How about who has the best tacos in Mexico City? What is your favorite fresa taco, Mr. Fernando? I have to say Califa, 100%. Califa, how about you, Maria? Yeah, I have to say Califa too. <laughs> Califa, are we agreed on this, Daniel? Califa, Dante? I don't want to say Califa, but I think that Califa is a good <laughs> fresa taqueria. I like Califa. I also like Orinoco. Shout out to my Monterrey brothers and sisters up there. Flour tortillas rule. Um, also, like I wanted to know uh, what Mexico City soccer team is the best. Yes, I've invited one super fan from each team to make an argument for why I should support uh, whatever team I should support. So I have three people. I have the Pumas fan, Fernando Gesto, right here. How you doing, Fernando? Hey, How are you, dude? I'm good. I have Cruz Azul fan, Kenneth Smith, here in the house. Hey, and how you doing, I, have, <laughs> I have Club America supporter, Jose Manuel Mercado, joining us on the show. So this hey, is yeah. exciting. I have a lawyer, an economist, and a businessman. So this should be interesting, all right? I just realized that I'm wearing the same shirt as I wore on that episode because I, I try to wear different shirts every day and I totally failed on that one. But anyway, our probably one of the funniest segments, our final segment that I'll show you, cats and dogs playing Loteria. That fill all your book and right after you, Loteria! But if you don't yell, you can win, okay? El corazón. La campana, la rosa, el catri, el melon. Uh, that's great. That's what, that's my, my favorite skit. All right. So that is it for our first season of the